Hello everyone, my name is Kelsounds, and today I want to show you guys how to make this tom noise. It's just a serum synth, and then a snap heap with some processing stuff, and uh, some more processing. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but um, but yeah, I just I made a sample pack out of uh, the synth, and I thought it'd be a good idea to show you guys how I created it, so you can use it in your own production, or create it yourself and uh, just mess around with the patch. There's also going to be a, uh, a free download of this, so it'll be on my blog post, so I'll just uh, group this up, put it uh, as a, available as a download, so that way you guys can uh, look at it for yourselves if you want to just see what I did uh, in more detail, or uh, I don't know, you could do whatever you want with the preset. But yeah, let's dive into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is grab a Serum, and then the default shape, I'm going to go to analog, basic shapes, and make it a square wave. And then for oscillator B, I'm going to leave it as the default wave. Then I'm going to turn the filter on. And then make sure uh, both A and B, or both oscillator A and oscillator B, are going through the filter. Because we're going to be uh, modulating this. Then you're also going to want to turn up the resolution to like halfway, like 50%. And then you're also going to want to turn up the fatness of the uh, filter. All right, so the first thing that we're going to modulate is the level of both the oscillators. So I'm going to go ahead and create a shape kind of like this, and then I'm going to turn it into an envelope shape a little bit here, uh, kind of like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and drag LFO1 to level 1 of oscillator A, and then the level for oscillator B. Turn uh, both of these all the way down, and for LFO1, for instead of uh, the trigger being off, it's going to be set to envelope. And then while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, exit out of that. Insert some MIDI here for the sample. And let's see, I'm going to set it to C2. Oh yeah. And we might have to come back and adjust the note later. Or we can do it inside of, uh, with, with the octaves inside of the synth as well. So yeah, it sounds like that. Kind of low in volume, but I'm going to turn this up. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the levels for oscillator A. I think I just turned it all the way up, honestly, uh, for the modulation. And then for oscillator B, I am going to turn it up just a little bit, maybe like 70, 75 or something like that. It's going to be louder. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and for the second thing that we're going to modulate is going to be the filter. So I'm going to come over here to LFO2. And then I'm going to make this kind of shape right here. It's like a ramp. Then I'm going to drag LFO2 to the cutoff. And drag it to around maybe like maybe like 80 hertz. And then for the modulation, I'm going to turn that down. I'm also going to set this to envelope. And I'm going to set the rate to 1 8 The rate for LFO, uh, LFO1, that was also set to 1 8 So there we go. And I'm also going to adjust the envelope part a little bit here for LFO1. Alright, so perfect. We have our modulation going on. And if we need to, we'll just we'll come back and adjust things as well. Uh, I think I'm, I am going to turn the modulation part up a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Round 43. Alright, so this is going to be the fun part. Uh, for LFO3, we're going to go ahead and modulate the course of oscillator A. And so I'm going to create a shape kind of like this. And actually, before we get into the shape, I'm going to set the rate to 1 16th. Uh, so it's faster. Then I'm going to kind of just mess around with the shape a little bit. Then I'm going to drag LFO3 to the course. I'm going to head to the matrix, and instead of it being back and forth, I want to make it a, I think this is positive. Yeah, just make sure the arrow is going to the right. This is bipolar, this is positive, or something, something like that. Yeah. So instead of it going back and forth, it's just going in one direction. And then uh, I'm going to turn up the course a little bit. And I think I set it to around like 70. So yeah, that's that's perfect. 
I'm also going to turn the phase randomization to zero for both of them, so that way it's just starting at the same uh, position. All right, so that's like pretty much the first part of um, of making our tom. All right, so now we're going to head to our FX and turn on the distortion, and I left it at tube distortion, and I just turned up the drive uh, quite a bit, uh, around like 80. This really depends how much distortion you want it to have, because we're also going to add some more distortion with the Snap Heap plugin. So I am fine with that. Oh, this. <laughs> this should not be happening. So uh, turn this to envelope on LFO3 uh, if it's not already. Yeah, whoops. It was. It kept on modulating. So yeah, just make sure it's set to envelope so that way it doesn't keep going. Perfect. All right, so now that we have our main sound inside of Serum, we're going to go ahead and do some post-processing inside of Snap Heap. And then before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and add a new group and rename this processing. All right, so the first snap-in that I went ahead and added was the frequency shifter, and I set it to 30. I really like uh, the frequency shifter inside of Snap Heap, or just any kind of frequency shifter, just because it doesn't snap uh, or it doesn't transpose the frequencies. Of a, of a sound, it kind of just shifts it. That's why it sounds like a, it doesn't sound so so fixed, I guess I could say. And then the next snap-in that I added was a compressor. Went ahead and set the threshold down a little bit. Kind of shape the sound even more. When I right click and hit negative 17. The ratio, I think I had it set to four. Uh, that's a lot of uh, compression. And the attack, I'm going to go ahead and turn down a little bit. And for the release, probably turn that up just a bit. Then I'm going to turn up the makeup gain. All right, that's perfect. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and add a multi-pass. And then for the bands, I went ahead and set this to, I think, around 4,000, and then this to around 200. Then I went ahead and added a dynamics snap in and turned up the highs a bit. Kind of see where the volume's at. So I'm going to right click and hit negative 22. And then for upwards compression, I'm just going to turn this up to 2, or turn the ratio to 2. All right, I'm going to bring this up a little bit more. Perfect. Then I went ahead and added another dynamics to the mids here. And instead of upwards compression, I did downwards compression. So I think I'm going to turn this, or uh, turn the high threshold to negative 20. And then the ratio to 2 as well. And I'm also going to turn down the mix. It's around uh, 57. I'm going to leave the attack alone, and then the release, I'm just going to turn up a little bit. And then I'm also going to add a gain uh, for the post effects, and uh, right click and hit uh, two decibels of, of gain. Perfect. Oh yeah, it's definitely got some more distortion, but I like the way that sounds. And then I added the snap heap snap in. And went in here, I did some parallel processing, and then I grabbed a convolver and added, I think it was called a theater space or something like that. Uh, oh, theater stage. And this is, uh, this adds reverb to the tom, but I just wanted it to sound like it was inside of a space. Uh, so then if I play it back, it's pretty loud, but if I turn down the gain, it's a little bit more subtle. And I really like the way that sounded. So yeah, I'm gonna keep the gain around like negative negative 20, so it's not really loud. Actually, might go back in here and turn it down some more. Uh, maybe like negative 23. Yeah, that's fine. All right, and then I went ahead and added another frequency shifter and turned it down to like negative 80. So it's got some weight to it. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. And that is it for the first processing chain here. All right, so before we move on to the second 
uh, processing group. I'm going to go ahead and add a group, and uh, I think I just named it Boost. Boost stuff. <laughs> and all this is um, is a shaper, some gain, and some EQ. So we're going to go ahead and add the shaper. And I made this kind of shape with the shaper. I uh, kind of like that. I turned the drive up uh, like right in the middle. And then I grabbed a gain. Just because shaper doesn't have a gain inside. It would be really helpful if it did. Um, but uh, since it doesn't, we're just going to have to use the gain snapping. I'm going to turn it down because it's going to get kind of loud. Uh, so around like negative 12 maybe. And I might even uh, turn down the drive a little bit as well. Alright, so the drive to around like 2, and the gain, I'm going to set to like negative 7 or something. Perfect. And as you can hear, it's very distorted, but I, I like the way that sounds, honestly. And uh, if you don't, you can always adjust the shape of the shaper, or turn down the drive or the mix, and uh, mess around with the gain as well. But I'm going to leave it like that, and then I'm going to add a slice EQ. I'm going to come in here and do a little bit of a clean cut with a uh, low cut filter. I'm going to come over here to the filters and turn this to 6 dB instead of a 12 dB cut, and then kind of just... Move it to around 53 hertz. And I'm also going to grab a peak filter here and add two decibels around the mids. Also going to turn down the Q. Or I'm just going to sweep through and see what I like best. Alright, so around 3030 uh, hertz. I don't know. Actually, that's such an odd number, but yeah, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it there. Perfect. And that is pretty much it for the, uh, for the second chain. And then I didn't do this in the first preset that I had, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a OTT. Just because I like the way OTT sounds on anything. And I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. Turn up the time. So that way it makes uh, the compression happen faster. I'm going to turn this to like 12. I don't want to add a whole bunch. Oh, and then of course, uh, go ahead and put a limiter on the end of the chain so it doesn't clip. Even though it's uh, pretty much distorting. And that is the preset. You can go ahead and, of course, come back inside of Serum and mess around with, uh, you know, the parameters and the sounds. Uh, and then you can also mess around with the processing inside of Snappy as well if you want. But um, I think I'm satisfied with the sound. And so that's how you make a tom or distorted tom noise. I'm going to go ahead and bounce this to audio and uh, see what we can do here. Okay, so this is the uh, sample recorded. This is what it looks like. And I usually like to just uh, mess around with the audio. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and I might even like cut a little bit of the transient off. That sounds pretty good. Then I'm going to edit this some more inside of the audio clip. Just kind of give it this kind of shape. Maybe drag it out a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to turn off the warp as well. This is what I like to do after recording samples is mess around with the, the pitch. It sounds pretty cool pitched down or pitched up. Uh, what, whatever is your preference really though. But honestly I kind of like the way it sounded originally so I'm not really going to pitch it. I'm just going to consolidate it. And uh, there's our sample. So yeah, that's how you uh, make a tom inside of, or with Serum and Snap Heap. Just some processing, and uh, we used a, what, what did we use, a square wave and a triangle wave. Like I said, the 
preset. I'm going to leave the preset available for download uh, for free. It's just going to be on my blog post on my website. And then I also released a exclusive sample pack for uh, my subscribers. It's pretty. It's the same Tom, except I added a little more processing and I changed some things up a little bit. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I will see you in the next one. Adios.